today's Harry's Garage is on the Jaguar XJR, which um, I sort of arrived a few months ago. I've done 5,000 miles on it, and you'll probably notice a little bit of a similarity between that and my Project 7 that arrived last year about September time, because it's actually obviously the same colour. I thought it would be quite fun to have this matched pair of Jaguars, a sort of so-called toy crazy one, the Project 7, and then an everyday sensible car, like the 550 horsepower XJR. Not quite that sensible, but I felt with petrol prices suddenly plunging and around a pound a litre, this was the time, the final hurrah maybe, of the supercharged, crazy performance, uh, petrol-powered performance car. Um, been great fun having having the pair together and great fun that they're both available in the same exactly the same this British racing green metallic and then adding exactly the same hue of orange the BRM orange on the front grills and then a splash on the mirrors and then on the rear spoiler as well um, I'm immensely proud having the pair I and mean, it, it, it's remarkable how noticeable it is once you add that sort of orange grill on it but what's it actually like to live with well that's what I'm going to explain now let's go into the details now the car this Jaguar XJR replaced was my Range Rover SD V8 diesel. Uh, a completely different car, very easy to live with and things, but it struck me that there was a huge weight difference. Now Jaguar has sort of turned to aluminium, even though the Range Rover is aluminium as well. The difference in weight between a diesel Range Rover and this is knocking the door 600 kilos huge amount you're going to notice that and i felt with the modern saloons and all the technology stop start they've got these sort of super long gearboxes actually mpg and things isn't nearly as bad as, as they used to be say 10 15 years ago so the other thing also you you obviously this engine is available in the range rover svr as well but even that car with its four-wheel drive and all you know it's got the transfer gear etc is 500 kilos heavier than this car this car is a remarkable 1800 kilos it's just over about 1850 kilos okay the project 7 uh, has an extra 25 horsepower and it is about 300 kilos lighter again but this is quite a weapon the xjr and i just love having seen these two cars together and the colors and things i think there's 1125 horsepower of proper british beef the pair of them sat there i just think they're great together and uh, i've been enjoying them hugely key differences were on the jaguar xjr over where well, it came out as a super sport when this model was first announced it it had 510 horsepower and i was really surprised that they dropped the xjr there's a long history of xjr and when it first came out the supercharged straight six it caused quite a stir because this was such an easy living car this thump of performance always automatic and it got a quite a following and they did it again and when they came out this model they dropped it completely and went to super sport fortunately they realized that perhaps that wasn't such a good idea and in 2013 it was the first version this arrived this is the 2016 model year xjr and you'll notice it has these really key lights on his laser lights at the front and a fantastic signature if i just pop the lights on you'll see how it's just this little j flashes on the daytime running um, gears. It's got it's got the vents at the front, sort of all black look. Um, it's got a much more up to date sat nav and um, infotainment and apps. It's actually got a really cool app actually, which I have to show you. Where um, you can just look at my phone at any point and see what the range is, how much fuel's in it. I've got a log of every journey I do in this vehicle, and you can even start your car remotely. On a chassis side, what's different? It has these unique wheels. These are forged wheels. They're lighter than um, the regular XJ, and they also carry these. Um, Pirelli P0. This is a dedicated performance tar that Jaguar team developed. They're available on the XFRS. They're a really good pure summer tar really, but the ultimate performance tyre. Inside is obviously lashings of leather and a really nice touch is the Alcantara all on the roof, um, on the pillars and on the roof. Multi-adjustable seats, even uh, the bolsters sort of can pinch you as well. Remind you that perhaps you ought to go down the gym a bit more often. This, believe it or not, is a short wheelbase version of the XJR, which um, is a bit of a misnomer because it is it is vast outside. The short wheelbase doesn't get adjustable seats in the back, but it's a very comfy place to do with an immense sound system and, of course, soft clothes and things like that. A monster boot. If you go in there, there's a, there's a black hole. It's probably all you can see, but uh, absolutely huge actually all powered etc and the xjr is finished off with quad pipes at the rear as you can see there 
uh, it gains a different exhaust on the XJR, so it's got a proper bark. But what is a sort of not really known by many people is this car was developed by the same team who developed the Project 7. Um, back in 2013, this is the engine, the um, ETO engineers, they were working on this, that then evolved into SVR, SVO, Special Vehicle Operations at Jaguar Land Rover. So the same team who developed the car did the Project 7 and also did the Range Rover SVR, but this is the first iteration. Right, what's it like inside and what's it like to drive? Let's get to that. Funny how once you've lived with soft closed doors, you think, why hasn't this car got soft closed doors? Very subdued compared to a Project 7 starting up. Well, that's sort of the character of the XJR, really. There's no fancy button to open the valves on the exhaust on this car. What there is, is this smoothness. You just set off and it feels tight, but nicely resolved ride. I couldn't get over as soon as I stepped into this from the Range Rover, think, hang on a minute, I think this rides better. And it doesn't, it's stiffer sprung and things, but the actual moving off from the start feels better, it's just less choppy. It's a um, car for, built for dynamics rather than off-road ability. And the performance, I love the performance. As soon as you touch the paddle, you're, you're live. I'm in drive at the moment, so this isn't, um, I can go into sport if I want. But the moment you step in it and you step on that throttle and that supercharged V8 comes to life, you're in a different planet. Performance compared to Range Rover is somewhere completely different, as you'd imagine. But it's this ease, the access you have to it, and the throttle response because it's supercharged. Now, I'm not going to do a full road test right now because where I'm going is the tyre fitters. Because this car is about to have some snow tyres fitted or winter tyres fitted. Might be April. But we're hoping to catch the very last bit of snow up in the Alps because tomorrow morning we're all packing up, four up, and we're off to the French Alps, just close to Val d'Isère. And you're coming along too, and we're going to end up at a snowy Alps with a bit of luck, and just see what the car's like over there. Well, morning. It's, it's time to go to France. Um, the tyres are now fitted. There's uh, P0 Nero tyres, the pretty special uh, snow performance tyre on this car. Slightly wide, uh, narrow at the back, 275s instead of 295s, but I hopefully won't notice the difference. I've got the packing challenge to come next. I'm a slight spot of bother at home because I said to my son, who's a ski instructor level, level two, um, who has a different pair of skis for every type of snow, knowing, uh, known to man, um, he could take his skis with him. But I didn't tick the box when I ordered the car for the ski hatch and it's not there. So I've got a grumpy son, but apart from that, the pack is going well. Is a black hole. We've got a lot to fit in. I've actually got to pack uh, enough stuff for six people because we've been joined by my daughter and boyfriend later in the week. But yeah, that black hole is going to get filled up. Um. which is a lovely little town about six, seven hundred miles away from Oxford. I'll show you on the map roughly where we are. So we've come down from Calais, did the, did the tunnel, Reims, Troy, and work all that way down, Dijon to Macon is there. But what I want to do is actually take you through the app, because when you, uh, the latest 2016 of this XJR included, come with an app. And I, I can't get over this app and how useful it's proving and it just logs everything you've done. Um, it's really quite useful because it will give direction to your vehicle. It's not very useful here because it's just caught parts in the courtyard, but when you're in London or something like that, 
that's really useful when you work out the best way back to the car. I go back to the uh, app, there we go, it's, well, it's still updated but it's got a fuel range, it will, it will do this um, as we go along but it will tell me how many miles I've done, what the fuel range is and that sort of thing. But it's, the next page I love because it's got something called engine start and if I want to set the target temperature outside, so I just quickly nip back, so outside is 6 degrees so I think oh it's a bit chilly, there we go, and now it will start the engine. But the other great thing is this, the way it logs everything on the journey. Um, so from yesterday, we set off, it says 9.50, it was 8.15 UK time, went to a petrol station, went to fill up in fuel, if I press that one, there we go, That's this is this journey. We averaged 34.7 to the gallon for that journey. Just love how I've got actually got connectivity to the uh, car via my phone. I've never had that before, but it's one of the really useful things I, I love about this car is that you know exactly you log everything it's done. It also makes me wonder what's it going to be like in 20 years time when you can buy a car and you see exactly every single journey it's done. I mean, it's history is ridiculous you're going to get with cars in the future. Enough yabbering, time set off, we're off to the Alps. In about three hours time you should be looking at staring at snowy mountains and perhaps putting those snow tiles into use. Probably time to go. We arrived at um, the ski resort early this afternoon, um, offloaded the family and got all the skis high and things and I've just gone out for a bit of a hoof because there's some great roads around here. There's a road, well, I'm on the road now up to Val d'Isere, um, great bit of road, it's sort of something, I've gone, waited to the evening really because it's, it's sort of calmer because there's a lot of buses and things on it but going in this direction is pretty cool. I'm just going to turn, there we go, you've got a two-stage traction control on this car, um, they've got a track setting where if you press it once and it goes to this track DSC and it just gives a little bit of um, leeway but you've got another one and you just go down to a completely off setting. And there aren't many cars that are turned completely off, but this is one of them because this car just has a has a sense of purpose. Um, it, it, it's it's a long wheelbase car, which always sort of helps with a rear drive car. It never makes it snappy. I've got to be hanging because cars come the other way, but. Uh, it's just one of those cars that comes alive on the right bit of road. It's when that lightweight sort of comes, the 1800 odd kilos, and the fact it's two wheel drive, it's got a clever locking diff on it. It's got this instant response, this 550 horsepower engine that's just with you all the time. I, you know, it's one of those things I found with the Range Rover really annoying, other turbo cars, turbo diesel cars especially, is you, you just join in a road at T-junction or something and you, you're ready to join the traffic, it's a gap in the traffic, and you put your instruction down, I want to go now, and they sit there and they sort of decide what gear to set off in and then they puff the turbos into life and then you're off. Not with this one. This is instantaneous grunt. Poof, you hit the accelerator, you're off. There's no hesitation. You want to go, we're going. And I love that about it. The bits I really like is obviously this hooligan bit we're just going to experiment with. But the fact that we've just drifted across Europe, we averaged um, yeah, 66 miles an hour, it was 770 miles, and the MPG is 30.6. Well, I never expected that from this car, that it could, I knew it would be a mile muncher, but I didn't know it was so relaxed at that, that sort of speed, cruising speed that it would just sit petrol. It's electric um, power steering on it. Um, they've had the first generations with um, the F-Type and then they changed to this one for the XJ and it's sort of, if you think about it, it's sort of upgraded from where they first started out and now it's just lovely, just off center. It, it gives me uh, information I want from the steering. And uh, so the steering, I have to say, is, is really good, really sharp, especially on its um, summer tires. It's slightly compromised because I'm on these winter tires, but I, I've still really enjoyed it. Amazing size boot. I sort of missed the practicality of having a. have a, a hatch but uh, that's one compromise I'd swap it for the way it goes up a road like this 
and I just love the way it doesn't actually shout about its performance. It's not like the other Jaguars that have a popping, uh, crackling exhaust. And the, and the comfort, um, everybody said, well, this is really nice to travel in. Um, super quiet. There's always a slight background hum, I find, with diesel. You don't realise it until you get in a petrol and you realise, oh, you've just gone down a couple of knots on the sort of decibel rating, um, which is, again, a really nice character of this car. And I like also that this is, this is like the big Jaguar. This is... This is the daddy of the Jaguar range. There's nothing above the XJR. That's where it sort of stops. This is this defines Jaguar, and it sort of goes back to its old strengths of the brand. And it's it was a driver's car that also had grace and pace. And I just that's sort of where the XJR is. I like the tech. I like the connectivity. Um, so five, six thousand miles into this car, I'm actually enjoying it much more than I expected at the outset. What I want to do next, I fancy taking it on a track day, as I think actually it would be a real hoot and you can really let it let it fly and give serious surprise to people because they don't imagine this five metre car to behave like that. Um, so I want to do that. I'm going to live with it a bit more. I haven't missed the four wheel drive. I think with you know snow tires, etc., I, I can get about here no problem at all. And I don't want to compromise all my you know, driving I do by having think, oh, I've got to have a four-wheel drive just because when it's winter has arrived or I need the hatchback because I might buy something on eBay. Nah, I can borrow a car for that. And so I'm going to enjoy this car for what it is, this confident, ultimate Jaguar hooligan car, but in a dinner suit. Enjoy this video, keep watching, there'll be more videos coming up very soon. I'm going to park up, in fact, I'm going to go to full limo mode because we're entering the resort. And then we're going to have some fun here and ski, but I hope you enjoy the video and subscribe. See you soon.